Yo, what's up? This is your boy Postman, and you are tuned in to Post in the Diary Room. Welcome to Post in the Diary Room. And as you may know, every day is a good day to get a delivery from the Postman. And today's delivery is called Fighting Futility. So, Fighting Futility is an album by Ndadao. And Ndadao hails from the outskirts of uh, the South African region, being Lesotho. So, Ndadao actually put on some of his friends in this particular project. And um, it's interesting to note that uh, Tepo Mofana is the man behind. The cover is the man who did the the cover, and Tepo Mufan is actually an abstract artist who also comes from Lesotho, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, so this is an album that has ten tracks, and it features the likes of Alex Sono, uh, Marco Cole, as well as uh, Turk. So on the production credits, we have a big name. We have superstar producer Big Doe, who's actually been, I think, instrumental in some of the songs that we've been hearing in the commercial um fold as far as the hip-hop scene is concerned so yeah though she worked on i think six songs on this specific project and yeah the first song also worked on the first song being tapelo yali hippie so without wasting any more time let's just get into tapelo yali hippie oh so, tapelo yali hippie is actually a prayer for hip-hop heads and i actually had to go down you know and call some of my Sutu members and actually ask them you know what does hippie actually mean because i thought it was like a hippo an animal or something you know but um yeah the hippie is actually a hip-hop head and yeah, Ndadao here. Credit to also credit to Ndadao actually also for uploading lyrics regarding this project because if he didn't, then I would have had like challenges with like understanding the context of some of the things that he was talking about. Because um when you read the lyrics and actually listen, it makes the listening experience a bit better, you know. But um because of how he's actually rapping as well, you know, you can't necessarily listen to a Stogi T or a Nas and all these other ma the lyrical miracle rappers like the people who actually make sure that they're actually using the proper rhyme scheme without actually reading the lyrics so um credit to Ntatao for that and yeah so on Tapele Ali Heap is actually talking about um how he's faced rejection so basically generally it's just um introspective and the song is just full of strings and yeah the beat is just it's just a good beat for whatever he's talking about, like the introspection that he's going through at this point. And he talks about how the spoken word has just become his crutch over the few years. And this is interesting to know because on some of the songs, he actually mentions how like the influence of his mother or like the, the, the biblical influence his mother has had on him has actually made him a bit stronger, you know, because his mother is actually like a prayer warrior and yeah. So Ndadao actually vows to change things around regarding, you know, several things in his life and several situations. And um, yeah, man. So instead of me making this uh, a lyric breakdown, it's actually going to be a review. So I like this joint because um, when I feel like this pressure on my shoulders, I'll probably tap into this joint, you know, and just realign my focus. And it's 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 a song that offers that feeling, you know, so. Shout out to Ntadao for Tapelo Yalihi. Middle Finger Song is a song that actually lets us know that the album is actually has begun. This is this is like where now we are going to the top, you know. Because at at at, at this specific song, uh Middle Finger Song is a song where I just imagine that I would no shirt off, you know, just a vest, you know, with the earphone just on the corner or on top of his left ear, you know, and it's just, you know, uh rapping over this boom bap beat and you know, it's just He's sounding a bit cocky, you know, he's just sounding a bit confident, you know, too confident for my liking because there's a point where he says, periodically, I'm 47, not good as gold, but I'm a G. You know, I promised you guys this is not going to be uh, <laughs> a lyric breakdown, but you can just hear some of the things that he says. And actually, when you actually go back home and just sit down or just in the comfort of your home right now, just open up the periodic table and just look what is actually ag and look what uh gold is uh the element name for gold and actually come back to me on the comments and actually tell me what you think about that was actually on oh, that that was actual uh rapping abilities as far as this is concerned but yeah yeah nothing much to the song besides the fact that he actually bodied he walked over the speed that was produced by pepinovich if i'm not mistaken yeah so middle finger song is actually the song that actually gets us into the groove of this album. Yeah, so, Dishes is a song where Ndada was actually telling us about how he used to have problems with trying to differentiate between Izicha, which is like Dishes, and um, your friends, like friends like my dog, Njayam, you know, type of thing. Like, my my dog, Njayam, like, he used to be, have a problem basically with differentiating between Izicha and Inja, like Izicha, you know, type like, 
because like that's the kasi slang you know like your friend is like your dog in jayam you know type of thing so all the time he used to call his friends easy Ija, you know that uh, that doesn't make sense you know but um yeah but this is also a song where it just also opens up about how some of his friends might not even hear the song just because maybe they're busy you know and uh some have been moving a bit fishy you know but it's okay and uh, sometimes in most cases you may realize that like you're not even famous enough for even your own friends to, like listen to you you know and um it just happens to the best of us i guess and um so shout out to doshi for also helping that down maintain the boom bap feel in this specific body and what i like about that down as far as the beat selection is concerned is that like he was able to like pick beats that he actually likes and he had a specific sound for this project and he actually made it work and um yeah man shout out to big doe for 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 what he did on this uh, song as far as the production goes because it's actually a hectic beat it's like a really busy beat that like no one would actually try wrestle with but that that was that guy for you so and he just chose to like speak about his friends and he actually made it a good song you know because like that's the main problem with so many people that like you're a great rapper but can you actually make a good song like there's this there's this thing there's like a new trend in 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 and music nowadays where artists are just generally like sampling real time people having conversations and like whatever they hear now is just going to go in a joint like probably there's going to be a part of this review that's going to go in a mix in that that joint or whatever and but what i like about this hunter that radio song is that there's like a part where in the beginning there's like someone tuning the radio and they're just looking for the right station before they actually find that station in in Sotho and that station and when you listen to that station like this person is actually making mention of Ndadao's name so i'm assuming he found someone in that particular field who actually did it for him or like maybe the context was about Ndata like Bondata you know like you know these these two two people when they get you know um yeah you know uh, yeah you know what I, you know what i'm saying yeah probably the context of that conversation happening in the radio was was about Bondata like you know like long lost fathers type thing and then you know he just made mention of his name and that out and then he just you know yeah but maybe he got it done for him you know which is like really creative from my standpoint and i think also also this specific song like it 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 just gathers a bunch of moments and just pieces them together because in that out makes mention that the mic is actually like his sanctuary and we also get to know how we actually got to become the the kind of rapper that he is because he says he expanded his vocab through uh a round of wordle and wordle is a game that grew in traction or grew or drew traction in 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 lockdown during the the lockdown restrictions and everyone is just playing that game you know just to you know chill their mind but there's also this jazz feel to the song man the strings in 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 this album are just you know they give you a sense of nostalgia that you you can't even tap into because you are not a part of that uh that era but just because you you've heard these sonic somewhere they just you know they make you want to dance even if you you don't have any memories attached to that so like what they did in this specific uh song is really amazing for just short for just a short interlude it was just interesting for them to just have so much to do as far as this song is concerned this song needs like visuals because it's a it's a good song in my books like i think one of the standout songs as far as this body is concerned and this song is called i am what i eat and i think when you listen to this uh song and you grab the essence of the song it's it's just in that out just telling us about his obsession about canalingus you know and he's just telling us that he's obsessed with eating the female organ you know like he's just telling us about his intimate the intimacy that happens in the bedroom when whenever he's involved you know what he does you know but the way he's just rapping on the song is just also amazing and how he just decided to you know eat the beat up like he's not scared of catching the drop like he's not going to wait for the drop he, he, when he hears the beat he just goes in and when he goes in he actually flows you know it's not one of those you know there's like he actually yo like there's, there's so many things to the song and this is one song that besides the canalingus but like it's a really good song and how how well it was produced essentially like the jazz feel the strings there the beat it's the very first person that came to my mind when i heard the song called you and i know was kulichana as soon as i heard that drop you know that 
a drop, I knew that Kuli China would be the best person to actually murder this beat because of of the way and that I was even rapping on this song. Like it's that uh Kuli China cadence, like there's that Mutsuako flavor to it that I can't, you know, you know. But yeah, man, this is a song where again and that I was actually rapping and he called upon a man called Alex Sono. And Alex Sono for me, he sounds like uh not in a guy, like completely. Like no offense to him, but they just do sound alike and um it's nothing different. Like there's nothing wrong with sounding like Night in a Guy. And I'm not really throwing strays or whatnot, but like because I think in in his favor it would work because people are already familiar with Night in a Guy, you know. But um I think that the, the thematic element of the song was just well thought through because the hook is just, you know, uh catchy, you know, it's one of those hooks that you can make the crowd sing along to it's easy for the crowd to catch on to and um you know besides the bars you know like it's easy for the crowd to just you can do your thing live in concert rap 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 then you just you know let them do their thing with the hook you know and um they just basically addressing uh, a bunch of people that have crossed them left and right just like jesus christ um it's just a bunch of people that have you know double cross them just fake people that they've come across in their journey of life you know and i think this was just a well through uh well thought through song and the concept of it just came aloud really I think well turk and that are generally meant to make music together because um they just complement each other in a sense that that can just come with the hard bars and turk just comes with like the hard bars but they just you know they're bits I don't know. They cater for like the lay mind, and that that would just caters for like everybody. But you know, it just does it in a more complex way. So when that was involved in in grown men, he was just going really high, and Turk was involved to just dampen like the high that 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 really left us in. So he just you know maintains everything, just dampens it out, and he just you know flattens everything out and but there's this recurring sound that 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 doesn't even care about it the way he's just you know he yeah that sound he doesn't care about it, he wants it there and personally for for for, for the listener it, it just makes the the song really uh not really listenable because yeah that recurring sound is where my head is at you know more than what that is saying and what turk is saying but what 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 appeals to me is that when Turk comes along, he grabs your attention. Like I think there's like a, a part where like the beat slows down for him, and you just hear him. You know, it's still there, but you know, it just you know he just yeah. It's it's it's. I think it's it's clear as day that these people. Yeah, I think it's it's safe to say they do actually owe us a a, 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 a tape together because. On, on this song, they're just um, flexing the grown men bars, you know. Turk is just saying he's been an, uh, a pioneer his whole life and that that was just telling us that he's, like, capable of taking on any rapper, any MC in the game. So, you know, I think with, with such confidence, why not just take it to the top and just give us a, a joint project with Turk, you know. So there's a song called Askis, and in this Askis' song, it's, it's, it's featuring Marco Cole. And I'm assuming Marco Cole is involved with like the the, the guitar, you know, the because now we are into like an alternative space and now we are away from the boom bap that we've been hearing. So Ntata in this sense is just citing his struggles as a an independent artist, you know, and he's feeling sorry for all of those that have been signed, you know, but he plans to actually make this work whether with the label or not, because his mother is a prayer warrior, so he can never fail. And there's one thing that rappers usually do, man, and I think it's just common around uh, amongst rappers because youngster CPT once said, "They said you can't, yeah, they said you can't go to heaven if you die from suicide." I thought it's God's plan, so how can you decide? So when Tatao says, "God planned my sin," if he's the one who plotted it, so like rappers just have this thing of just questioning God, bro. Like just don't question the Lord, bro. But yeah, so. Dadao in this song is just actually documenting his flows, his lows, his foes, his lows, and you know, and just awkward instincts that make him shave away, like move away from 
what's really important. So it's really important for him to do all of those those things because when he does that, then it just basically means that when it's time for him to reflect, he knows what to fix and what to to do when it's time to move on to the next thing. So yeah, also he also samples Iran Ferreira. Like Iran Ferreira is a guy that like blew up on Instagram for for just kicking a ball and just saying sue at the end of the the the, the video, you know, and uh, he, he just says a small line in a prayer, he says uh sue whatever. So Ndatao actually sampled that guy. So, so the song go by my time. time. So on by my time, time that I was actually saying I think this is a is a is a letter to somebody, you know, like he doesn't make mention of that person, but like this this the song is like a, 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 a racial feel to it. There's like a racial feel, low tempo, relaxed, you know. But it's like fast paced at the same time, you know. It's like a letter to someone because also he is just telling us about how he's like twenty two with like a lot of his plates, so he's just facing a lot at the same time. And um there's just a lot of pressures that are on your shoulders that you can't necessarily um I don't know if he can deal with, but also he says he, he's managed to turn like his pen into a paying job. So like I'm assuming there he's talking about like the gigs that are paying him. On the song Drummer Queen, uh Ndatao makes mention of his egotistical ways. Like he makes mention of the fact that he's a like, too much ego. And he says he feels the need to overcompensate just because he's not like living up to what his father was in his prime. And I think it's it's really interesting that he feels this way. But to Ndatao, like, bro, the music thing is actually something that might work out for you because you, you have, like, over 50 songs right now under your belt. So I don't see a reason why you need to stop. So you giving us uh, uh, 50 songs in a space of two years is really something. So you, uh, I don't think you, it's necessary for you to feel this way because I think the music is close to actually working out just the way you imagined it to be. But, yeah, man. Yeah, man. So he also says, forgive me for... He also asks for forgiveness from all the people that have, uh, like maybe like uh, relationships that have like falling apart, that have fallen apart in recent times, and he asks for forgiveness because like um, yeah, man, he's probably too busy. And but he also makes mention that he doesn't actually give a fuck about people that have given him fly by night energies in recent times. Like if you, he doesn't want your handshake because one day you're like this, and then the next you're not. So yeah, man, to untatao, man, you. Your body is really amazing, and um, yeah, you don't actually need to overcompensate. But yeah, man, shout out to Ntatao, man. This project is really sounding a lot more solid, um, especially from like an upcoming artist. Yeah, so in hindsight, man, um, yeah, Fighting Futility is a really strong body, and um, yeah, for for an upcoming rapper, he's really sounding a lot more solid. So it's hot right now in 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 Joburg, in 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 South Africa right now. It's really hot. Wherever you're watching from, please kindly like, share, subscribe, comment, engage with the content. And you know, man, it's been a really difficult time, especially with this review because, um, yeah, it's really hot. And, um, yeah, but pressure away a ton is getting too heavy. But, yeah, man, you, 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 need, to, you need to pay your dues when you need to pay your dues, man. Um, yeah, no excuses. And we did it again. So under difficult conditions. But, yeah, post in the diary room is out again and i will be back with another video so please like share comment and most importantly subscribe to the channel man um yeah i really appreciate it a lot and yeah so kindly tap into the project called fighting futility by Ndatao, and just make sure that you you know you, you 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 just enjoy yourself listening to this body because um i strongly recommend it as far as like maybe one of the best lessons of 2022 so kindly tap into uh fighting fertility and i'll be sure to drop uh, the links uh, related to this project really soon maybe on the bio even like always but yeah anyway man yeah post in the diary room signing out and i uh, will see you on the next one